All right, like you guys have probably clicked this video, I once was very uncomfortable squatting. Couldn't even do a plate properly, and the first time I really messed up my back doing it. So I really hope this can help you guys out a ton. Kind of went from not even being able to do a plate to being able to hit this. So if you appreciate the amount of time and effort it took for me to get there, especially with a lot of self-research, I'm gonna package it all in this video for you guys, really help you out and get your squat sky high. So be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. If you're ready to get that squat, to the roof, let's go. So common mistake number one, we're starting with weight and range of motion. I thought this one would be obvious, but it seems like way too many people jump into doing a ton of weight without actually being able to do a proper squat without weight on the bar. So before you touch this bar and load on the plates, I want you guys to learn how to do a proper body weight squat. So this goes in with a lot of um, setup cues and learning just how to properly body weight squat. So for example, what I like to do is I like to keep my knees turned a little bit outwards, my toes pointed this way, instead of having them straight like this, because you'll notice when you go down here, your knees start to cave. So one thing, you just really wanna get comfortable without any weight before doing anything. And I say this so many times because a lot of people don't understand this. So you wanna go get your proper setup. I personally like to have my feet in a jumping position. So where I would typically, you know, load up and then jump is where I like to get my feet set up. So you're gonna to wanna to start like this, go all the way down, all the way up and they get very comfortable before loading on the plates. It's way too often that I see people doing two, three, four plates and they can't even do one properly. So do that, get the full range of motion, go to 90 degrees and I guarantee you guys will see awesome results within the squat. So the second most common mistake, especially for new squatters and experienced squatters, I know people that squat over 400 pounds and they're still having issues with this, is when you get some heel lift with the squat. So it'll look something like this. So as you can see, when I squat down here, it's very natural tendency to actually have your heels lift up. And that's something you have to learn to fight through driving through the heels. It can be a huge mistake once you get into those heavier weights. So good news is, although this is a big issue, it's not too hard to fix. Some people that have already learned it, it's very hard to unteach it, but if you're just getting started, you wanna make sure you nail this out. I really recommend doing some drills with a really light warm-up load. For me, that'd be about 135. And what you gotta do is you gotta really think about your foot placement here, where you're situated. It's very important that you keep your chest upwards. A lot of the reason you'll lift is because your back is leaning forward. You're losing the support of your abs, your core region, and your back is actually gonna tilt. So you'll notice here, as soon as my back floats, I know you can't see, but my heels begin to lift. So that's the main cause of that. The easiest way to kind of debunk that is when you're under really set by drilling your rock together like that, really tight under the bar. When you push them together, you get the support of the bar pushing your spine downward. By doing so, you have a very good potential for bar path. So when you're positioned like this, you really work on sitting down through the heel and exploding up through the heel. So it's very important that you're sitting back and you're trusting that process. Now with that, this is like a super tip because this one tip right here is gonna change the way you squat. I have experienced squatters that don't even realize how important this is. When you squat, it's not that you're starting with your knees and then going down. So as you guys can see with the overview here, the video on top of the screen, this is me squatting with my knees going forward. And you'll see how that's kind of pushing me to have that back collapse, push everything forward, and it's ruining my bar path by lifting up my heels. And once again, that's gonna make me feel weak, it's gonna make me fall over, I'm not gonna be able to drive and really use my leg muscles to get that weight up. Especially if you're struggling in a competition standpoint, or even if you're trying to hit a new one rep max, if you're doing a lot of weight and you're leaning, that's how you're gonna rip up your back, cause issues. Instead, you want to think like you're sitting on the chair. You can see I'm sitting here first, and then I'm also gonna show you the exercise on the other side of the screen where I'm sitting onto a dumbbell. And the best way to kind of show this is that you're just envisioning you're sitting back first instead of with your knees. So instead of it just being you're trying to get down the easiest way, you're sitting and then powering through those heels. And that will completely just destroy this heel lift error. Third mistake, guys, is not knowing proper depth. I know Kyle has talked about this very early on in the video, but this can be a very complicated and debatable subject, and I know the comments will come flooding in about this, so we're gonna address it. So I'd say there are a lot of different kinds of depths, and we're gonna go through them. So first, you can see Kyle here. This is a quarter squat. 
This is your weekend warrior. You have five. You know everyone has that gym. 500 pounds on the bar, screaming like crazy, taking a rack for an hour, not really working anything but his ego. Don't be that guy. Let's just stop there. Second, I'd say this is very high but acceptable. We do this for a lot of our clients who have mobility issues or maybe a bit older, a little less comfortable squatting. That's completely okay. Like you've got to do where you are comfortable. Next up, this is the range we recommend. And this is what most powerlifting feds recommend. That's when the creasing in your knee are aligned or just slightly above, ever so slightly, but they say aligned. Usually I've seen them call it higher. This is kind of your parallel range. This is kind of the golden grail of how you should be squatting. You can see it's lined up. You got a good depth and you got good control. Next up, we got the A to G or the super low. So some powerlifting meets will require your actual, your hip creasing to be below the knee. We've competed for that before. So we tend to go slightly below the knee. You'll see Kyle kind of pushing to want to do it in some of these explanatory reps, because that's what we need to do, because we don't want to get called on missing that rep. However, A to G is another thing people do. I personally don't advocate for it. It's really deep. It can be a little bit over the top and you can lose tension. Some people like it and they can just, they do it comfortably. They can stack on weight and go that low. If you're one of those persons, by all means, you don't feel any pain, go for it. But I'd say I really recommend learning parallel, sticking with it, and don't let yourself compromise. Before you know it, you'll creep up, up, and up. I was guilty too. I think I was doing four plates for a while, and I wasn't quarter squatting, but it was definitely above parallel, and it was a big issue for me to relearn how to keep hitting that parallel range. So make sure you guys are asking friends, you're filming yourself, you're seeing where you are, and that you're developing that consistent point. Because when you can find that consistent point that you're hitting in that hole, the hole is when you're squatting down here at the bottom of your squat, you can bounce out of it all. So you'll see with my more powerful kind of powerlifting movements, you can utilize power out of that hole and explode. This is not cheating, this is working on explosive raw power. This will help with everything. This will kind of correlate to jumping. They even say if you want to dunk, you have to be able to squat a certain amount of weight because you need to be able to generate so much force that you can come down, use that hole and bounce and explode out of it. Use all those muscles to drill into a really sturdy bar path. Okay guys, this is your squat 101. We're gonna show you this super quick. So this is from start to finish. If you guys have any questions after those mistakes, you're gonna to wanna to start by developing a consistent hand placement. For me, it's these rings. I have a pretty long reach, but I feel very comfortable here. A lot of people will say coming in closer will make your back tighter, kind of push your rhomboids or your scapula even tighter and help with bar support. I don't know, I've always been very comfortable here. Next up is to get a huge grip being really strong, then this is probably the most important in the squat. That's very underrated. So here, I like to put one from the front, one from behind, lean back a bit, and really drill in. See how if I drill in, I can really get my back tight, where some people will just go like this, right? Let's see how weak that is, and that's gonna hurt your back. You don't want that, you want your back tight. So start back, drill in, and really kind of tuck into your rhomboids. It's hard when there's not much weight, and then you're gonna come under, line your feet perfectly, you guys can see that real quick. Quick shot. So feet are here, now up to my hips. You're gonna lean back, head up a bit, stand up through the hips. Now from here, your walk up's very important. I recommend a two step, um, and then a little correction step myself. This takes practice, some people do a lot of steps. Develop the consistency with the walkout because it makes you feel comfortable even when you're using an uncomfortable amount of weight. So here you can see I'm still nice and postured, I'm not slouching, I'm in a strong position. My knees aren't locked as well, that's going to cause some pain if you're like this. You're going to want just a little bit of bend. Now from here, like I said, you're going to start sitting into it and from here once again, explode. So once again, down, explode. Now at the top, really squeeze your butt, squeeze your hips, come through it nice and strong, open those knees, boom. That's all it is. Then when you want to rack it, I go one step, and I like to dump it. It's consistent for me. As long as it's set up right, you will not mess up. Oh, I kind of got it. <laughs> Hit that like button if you like this really weird, over the top nonsense. So this is our bonus tip. Before we go into variations, is keep it simple, stupid. I'm sure you guys have heard that saying before in a lot of things in life. A lot of people do BOSU ball squats, like crazy things where it just looks like they're gonna hurt themselves or get in a lot of danger. There's no need to do stability movements with squats. Squats require stability on their own. If you wanna do like a half BOSU ball squat or something, that's fine, but don't keep it over the top. We really recommend just doing squats, doing them often, doing them hard and heavy, and using these three variations that we're gonna show you real quick. Variation number one, kicking it off with the pause squat. Now some people like to touch depth, hold it, get right out, whereas some people also like to hold it for 
uh, you know, three to four seconds. I think this really depends on you, your goals, other factors. Um, but, but essentially what this is going to do is it's going to help you find your depth, get comfortable in it, and learn how to spring out of the squat when you get stuck. Moving on to the hack squat. Now this isn't something I'd exactly switch out for the regular barbell back squat, but more so something I would add in to get a bit more volume in within the leg workout. However, if you do find yourself not being able to find depth or not being able to position properly on the regular squat, highly recommend trying this out. Um, it really helps with explosion. You can load on a lot of plates and it's fantastic for your quads and overall leg development. Variation number three, we've got the safety bar squat. Now this is an awesome alternative to the conventional front squat. It takes a lot of tension off the spine and it actually places it more forward on your body, forcing you in an upright position. A lot of you guys were commenting on our latest video about you know, potential wrist pain on the front squat, so highly recommend trying this out. It is an awesome alternative to substitute in. If you have the opportunity to try a safety bar, try it out, let us know how it goes, and uh, enjoy. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Please comment down below one thing that you enjoyed about this video or one thing that you think will help take your squat to the next level. If you could please leave this video a like, it will uh, literally help us out so much. I don't think a lot of you guys realize how much likes and comments actually do help at our channel. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, share this with a friend, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.